Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe below for more ghoulish tales. I currently own a landscaping repair business in Southern California. And what happened that night, I will never forget. Or like any other business, you know, Monday through Friday 9 to 5, we have cameras set up because we have a lot of power tools and equipment throughout the facility and we don't want to deal with any vandalization or theft. With that being said, that's the moral of this story. Because what we saw that night on the video footage still haunts my dreams. Inside our store where the power tools and the grease containers are located, we saw these two things running across the surface of the floor. It was so fast, it was like the blink of an eye. First you saw them, and then you didn't. It's like they disappeared. They were humanoid in figure. They almost kind of looked like gnomes or elves or something. But they were only about two feet tall. I mean, I'm, again, I'm just judging off the video footage that we saw. One of them stopped in their tracks and looked directly at the camera as it was recording that night and smiled. It had a statistic smile. It's like it knew it was being recorded. And its eyes flashed. They glowed on the screen. And then it darted off never to be seen again. In our beliefs, these are known as duendes. They're kind of like elves or goblins in other mythologies. After checking the footage, I did a quick walkthrough around the business, and I noticed that some of our tools were missing. I don't believe I'll ever find those tools, but I hope I never come across those things ever again. This happened to me when I was six years old. Back then, I lived in a small town on the outskirts of Mexico City. We were very poor at the time. It was just me, my mom, and my four siblings as our dad was up in America for work, we would only see him occasionally. Now, my memory isn't the best, as I'm now 25, but I recall there was this one night where I was in a deep sleep when I started feeling this tickling sensation on my feet. <laughs> Half asleep, I sat up rubbing my eyes and looked down towards my feet. And that's when I saw him. I saw this little person with a knife try to cut into my toe, and that's when he sliced me. I screamed out of pain and I kicked that little booger right in its face. There was blood on the sheets and I limped out of the bedroom running to where my mother was sleeping. I was stuttering and trying to explain to her what had happened and she was just freaking out by seeing all the blood on my foot. All I was doing was saying, over there, in my room, and pointing with my finger. She told me to stay put as she grabbed her chancla and walked over towards my bedroom door. I applied pressure with a cloth and just waited as she left me. I just sat there, sitting in the corner by the wall. My mother, she started walking back towards me and she had a confused look on her face. Miha, there's nothing there. I tried to explain myself, but she was just telling me I probably just had a bad dream and cut my toe as I was running out of the room or something. But I know, I was not dreaming, and I refused to ever sleep in that room ever since. Looking back, I wonder what that thing wanted with my toes. Why was it going to cut me? What was the purpose of trying to hurt a child? I'll probably never know why, but honestly, I'd rather not find out. A 
my family had a small farm in Brownsville, Texas, which is right on the border of Mexico. And it seemed like every summer, some of our chickens would go missing. Sometimes, there was a blood trail that leaded into the woods. I never dared to follow that trail, though my papa did, and he never told me what he saw. He just said, don't worry about it, and get back to your chores. But the expression on his face was of pure terror and confusion mixed into one. I happened to notice that there was some blood stains on his jeans and boots. He was holding a skinny knife in his right hand. And I did catch that there was a wide-brimmed little brown hat in his left hand as he walked into the house. Ever since that day, we never had any chickens go missing. But my dad refused to ever tell me what had happened that day. Do you believe in magic? Or duendes? I never even heard of it until this happened to us. We had bought a fixer-upper house in Arizona and we were doing some demo work in the kitchen. I know it sounds cliche, but when we were tearing down the walls, we heard this screeching noise and it sounded like movement coming from within. At first, I kind of got creeped out because I thought the house was infested with rats or something. But as we grabbed the mag light and shined it inside the wall, I swear... I saw this little gnome creature thing running deeper inside the wall and turning some corner from within. It happened so fast, I barely even caught it with my eyes. But I know what I saw, and it was no rat. We ended up backing out of the deal of that house. It just freaked me out so much. But I'm glad we did, because that house was already occupied. This happened to me and my friends when we were in middle school. I was roughly 11 years old at the time. We were just walking through the woods in Buena Vista, Panama. We love nature and the outdoors. We had our walking sticks and waters and snacks, and we just went out all day long until sunset. That's what we loved about summers the most, just the independency of being a child without supervision of adults, being little explorers and letting our imaginations run wild. Well, there was that one time our imaginations went a little too far. We were hiking for a good couple of hours, taking breaks and snapping twigs and trying to make forts out of nothing and the casual stuff that little kids do. We heard some giggles nearby us. <laughs> At first, we thought they were other children, but we realized we're the only ones out there. Not too many people venture off in the woods out here. We all kind of looked around in confusion, trying to see where that noise was coming from. And then all of a sudden, we see this brown, wide-brimmed hat poking out from a nearby hill close by. And what wearing that little hat was some humanoid figure with a large nose. It was wearing some type of animal fur. It kind of resembled an uh, elf or forest sprite. It's really hard to remember and to give details as this happened a very long time ago. I looked around at my friends and I'm like, oh, guys, look over there. And then when I looked back, I noticed that a couple of rocks had been thrown at us. And then the giggles came again. I looked over towards that little hill and the figure was gone. My friends and I kind of looked at each other in confusion and we walked over towards the area where we saw that little thing. Whatever you want to call it. When we got over there, there was nothing in sight. But we did notice that there was some large hole in the ground leading somewhere underneath. 
There was no way in hell I was going to climb in after whatever that was throwing rocks at us and laughing. And there's no way that I ever went back there ever again either. To this day, we never went venturing off too far into the Buena Vista forest area. Because... Who knows what that little mischief bastard really wanted to do? Or was he just playing with us? I'll never know. And I'm okay with that. I hope that everyone has enjoyed the tales tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And share me. Spread me like butter.